31, let's take a look at whether or not these relations are functions. And on top of that, just for fun, I'm gonna tack on what are the domains and ranges of these relations. Because when we get to the next section, we're going to be talking about domains and range, so I just wanna give you a preview of what's to come. So if I look at this relation, I've got four ordered pairs and they graphed them out for me, but I think you can see that if you were going to use the vertical line test and you sent that vertical line right through x equaling negative two, it would intersect your relation at two points, which means this relation fails the vertical line test. So no, this is not a function. Now, I'm just gonna sketch this in here. The domain in this case Again, because we just have a list of ordered pairs, then we're going to make a list in our domain. So our x coordinates, if we look through this, I have negative two, negative two, four, and four. I don't need to list repeats. So I'll just do negative two and four. All right. And the range, that's always the set of all possible y values, right? Domains are corresponding to our x values. Ranges correspond to our y values. Again, I have a list of ordered pairs. So I'm going to list out my y values. I see three, zero, and again, three, zero. I don't need to list repeats, so I'll just write zero and three, okay? All right, let's move on to the part B. This is an ellipse. Maybe you've seen an ellipse at some point in your math careers. I think of it as it was a circle, but somebody kind of sat on it and smushed it a bit. So let's first figure out, is this, a, is this relation a function? And you can pass almost any vertical line through here, and you see that it, it intersects at two points, right? And so when a vertical line hits your relation at two points, that means it fails the vertical line test. So no, this is not a function. Now in terms of domain and range, let's chat about domain and range and relate it to interval notation. So when we talk about domains, you wanna talk about the set of all possible x values. And we're always gonna go low to high. And on the x-axis, that means left to right. So if you look at your graph, right, and I'm just kind of sketching with my pencil here, the leftmost point is right here. And that ordered pair is negative five, zero. Right? So that's the leftmost point of my graph. And when you're talking about domains, you only care about the x-coordinate. So my domain, the lowest x coordinate or the lowest x value in my domain is negative five. And then conversely over here, right, the highest, or I should say the rightmost point occurs at five zero. And again, I only care about that x coordinate. So when I go low to high, I'm gonna say, I want all of the x values between negative five and five. Now I want to include negative five because I hit the actual ordered pair negative five zero. I also want to include five because five zero is part of my graph. So I'm going to put those in brackets. So in this case, I have ordered pairs continuously from negative five to positive five. Again, left to right. So anytime we talk about domains, we're gonna go left to right. And you can see as I move left to right, no x coordinates, no x coordinates, or really just no ordered pairs, no ordered pairs, boom. Ordered pair, leftmost point, all the way to my rightmost point. And if we look just at the x-axis, that happened between negative five and five. Okay, on the range side of things, we still wanna go low to high, but on the ranges, low to high means go down to up. So I wanna find the lowest point, which is right here. And this, I'm gonna sort of move it over here. It's hard to see. This is zero, negative three. And I wanna find the highest point, if it exists, and that's gonna be zero, three. Now, when we talk about the ranges, I only care about the y coordinate. So my lowest y value that I hit is negative three, up to my highest y value, which is positive three. And I wanna include both of those in my range because zero negative three is part of my graph and zero positive three is part of my graph. So I wanna include those range values. So I'm gonna put brackets around them, okay? All right, let's try a couple more examples. I'm gonna scoot the page up so that we can see all of this. All right, there we go, almost. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. 
So if I look at this, this graph, this is our basic line, right? It's got a positive slope going through the origin. And if you were to put a whole, as many vertical lines as you wanted to through this relation, you can see they're only ever going to hit in one point. So is this relation a function? Yes, this one passes the vertical line test. Now, let's have a chat about domain and range because this becomes a little funkier because the arrows are introduced. So let me talk about what I mean by the arrows. If you look at this arrow, it's headed in two directions. It's at, headed up and it's headed right. So we are headed right for E, which stands for forever, and we're headed up forever, all right? I, I've been told I'm outdated that nobody actually says for E anymore. Um, they, they used to write that in my high school yearbook and that's like 25 years ago, I get that. But when we would say we'll, we'll be friends forever, we'd just write for E. All right, so when you see forever, I just mean it's headed up forever, or excuse me, when you see for E, it means forever. So this arrow is headed right and up forever. And then on the flip side of that, this one is headed left and down. All right, so let's talk about domains and, uh, and we'll start with domains, but we'll do range in a sec. Domain is always left to right. That's how we're always gonna do this. The X coordinates from the left to the right. And if you look here, I wrote out that I have left forever and I have right forever. So what these forevers will turn into in terms of domains and ranges is positive and negative infinities. So when I say left forever to right forever, I'm really saying my domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And as we discussed before, anytime you have an infinity, you put parentheses around those, those, um, those symbols. All right, on the range side of things, again, we're gonna go down to up. It's always low to high in the range. And you see down forever, and you see up forever. So a down forever is gonna translate into negative infinity. The up forever is gonna turn into positive infinity. So I have all real numbers, again, for my range. So we will take a look at negative infinity to positive infinity. And again, whenever you have infinities, those symbols are gonna get parentheses if we're talking about interval notation. All right, so let's try one that gives you a counter example to this. Let, let's take a look. First of all, does this relation pass the vertical line test? And you can imagine if I passed a vertical line wherever I wanted to through this relation, it's only gonna hit my relation once, so yes, this relation is a function, it passes the vertical line test. And now let's evaluate the arrows so we can talk about domain and range. So anytime you have arrows, infinities are gonna pop up. So let's think, this arrow is headed right and down. So we're gonna say right forever and down forever. And here, this arrow is left and down. Okay, so whenever we're doing domain, we always wanna go left, comma, right, right? We wanna go low to high. When we're doing range, that means down, comma, up. And we'll determine parentheses or brackets in a moment, but this is what uh, I mean when I say low to high. In the x direction, that's left to right. In the y direction, that's down to up. All right, so let's see what's lit up for left and right. I see left forever, right forever, so I know I'm going negative infinity to positive infinity. Anytime I see infinities, I'm gonna put those parentheses around them. Okay, now, on the range, we have down forever and down forever. Okay, that's fine. That means in the downside of things, I'm gonna have a negative infinity, but I distinctly do not have a positive infinity on my up. So we need to see what was the highest point, what was the highest Y value I hit. And you can see this high point here. It looks to be about, what, negative two, four? If I'm counting correctly, this looks like the ordered pair, negative two, comma, four. All right, and let me make sure that's in view. Yeah, I think you can see that. All right, I only care about the Y coordinate here. 
So when I'm talking about that Y coordinate, you can see that it's four. So my highest Y value, right? I start at negative infinity and the highest Y value I hit is positive four. And I do hit that, that point on the graph. So I do want to include four in my range. Okay. All right. So we'll be practicing that in the next section. Again, I just wanted to give you a preview. So on the next page, we're going to start to practice function notation. All right. I'll see you in a few gang. Bye.